Toronto's news leader. This is Nine News at Four. You can hardly remember your own name. That's how bad it is. Eileen learned her lesson the hard way. Last year, she got hammered by the flu. Today, she's taking no chances. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. I'm Ed Green. And I'm Kim Christensen. Get ready for a new season of flu. Today, Colorado health experts are urging all of us to take steps now. Nine News health reporter Sherry Sellers is here with everything you need to know about the flu. And first off, take it seriously. Huh? Absolutely. For some reason, we have no respect for the flu. We don't think it's a real troublemaker. Yeah. Well, think again. The flu is a major problem in the U.S. Listen to some of these numbers. Every year, it's responsible for a total of 250 million days in bed away from work. More than 11 billion dollars in medical bills. The flu hits one out of every 10 Americans and it does kill. To understand just how many, let's go to a place we all know, Mile High. 76,000. That's how many fans pack into Mile High every time the Broncos take the field. It's scary, but imagine all of them killed in one year. The flu has done that and not that long ago. It was 1989, a horrible year for the flu. 1,500 Coloradans died. This year, at least 700 will, and thousands of us will feel like we've been tackled out there on the field by some monster. If you get influenza, you will feel like you've been run over by a Mack truck. At a news conference at Columbia Rose Medical Center, we learned the painful facts of the flu. You've been hit when you get a fever sudden chills your body aches you feel weak have no appetite your eyes burn and you can't stop coughing the suffering will go on for at least four days maybe two weeks each and every one of us has a community obligation to think about getting a flu shot quick stick it's the only way to avoid the flu you need a flu shot every year and despite all the stories it doesn't make a lot of people sick about one percent of all patients and then i'll be safe for this year uh -huh, Mickey Mouse. make sure your children get flu shots too unless you want them to bring home more than their homework the flu spreads easily the only children who cannot get a flu shot are children under the age of six months because there's no safety data and children who have hives when they eat eggs, which would be a very small number. And the same goes for adults. If you're allergic to eggs, don't get a flu shot. But the rest of you, it's time to get it done. If you're afraid of needles, Dr. Mostow showed us something new today, something you're going to like. It's called the biojector. There's no needle inside, just air pressure that forces the vaccine into your skin. It means no bleeding, no bruising, no real pain, and no reason to be scared anymore. And, uh, now, if you don't know where to get a flu shot, we can help. Nine News has teamed up with Centura Health to give flu shots for just $8. We have nearly 300 locations to choose from around the state so there should be one near you call 765-6175 for more information the number again 765-6175 and take a look at this list these are the people who absolutely need a flu shot if you're over 65 have heart or lung disease diabetes kidney disease if you're hiv positive or you're getting chemotherapy you are at special risk and that means that you could die if you get the flu mm -hmm. it's so important Take it seriously. Mm -hmm. Well, now, how long does it take to take effect the shot? You need to get it. It takes one to two weeks. So if we're already oh. seeing cases around the country, you need to get it now. No later than, I'd say, the first week of November, but you're taking a chance. And as our health reporter, you already got yours. Got my Band-Aid right here. Okay. Does, it, does that sort of mean that you're not going to get the flu or that you'll get a much lesser case of it if it does come around? Actually, the, it's, I think, 95% effective. So there will be those people who will still get the flu, but if you've had the shot, you'll get a much milder case, okay. a lot yeah. milder case. So yeah. I'm right Let's behind you with one. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Sherry. Well, more news coming up in a moment, but first, here's a look at what's coming up a little later on 9 News at 4. Did atomic testing in the 1950s put thousands of American children, many of them in Colorado, at risk for thyroid cancer? We'll tell you about a new push for full disclosure. Plus, a new first in space this afternoon involving an American and a Russian spacewalker. All coming up on 9 News at 4. Convicted killer Gary Davis will die in less than two weeks on Monday, October 13th at 8 p.m. Governor Romer made the announcement today. Paula Woodward's been following this story for us. Does Gary Davis know? He was notified this morning. The family of Jen Jenny May, the woman he killed, was also notified. Gary Davis was convicted and sentenced to death in 1987. He will be the first person executed in Colorado in 30 years. 
It was the type of crime that didn't happen in eastern Colorado. Jenny May was kidnapped from her home. Her two children were there at the time. The kids said that someone came down in the yard and talked to their mom and then pulled around the barn and um, they saw a little, a guy get out and kind of follow their mother and then they'd left in the car and she went up the hill with them. And in the first day of her disappearance, her family still hoped and believed she was alive. A well, housewife, a mother, she's bubbly and <laughs> a good person, always there. Call Jenny and us. Don needs to be home. They are a ranch family, and they kept in constant touch with radios, and they and their neighbors searched the vast spaces to try to find her. Gary Davis and his wife Becky were arrested, charged, and convicted, and the family, her husband, two children, sisters, brother, mother, and father, buried their wonderful Jenny. Eleven years after he killed her, Gary Davis is now set to be executed on Monday, October 13, 1997, at 8 p.m. One of Jenny's brothers and her father plan to be witnesses at the execution. Now, this is an execution by lethal injection. That's right. This is the first execution by lethal injection in Colorado. The last execution was the gas chamber. And Gary Davis's ex-wife is also in prison but did not get the death penalty. That's right. Becky Davis Fincham is in prison for life. Adams County District Attorney Bob Grant, interestingly enough, he prosecuted these cases, said that he felt his only failure was that he did not get the death sentence for Becky Fincham. Mm. Okay, thanks very much. Uh -huh. Police say a teenager in Mississippi stabbed his mother and then went to school where he shot three people. Witnesses say the teen took a rifle to his high school in Pearl, Mississippi, just south of Jackson, and started shooting. 16-year-old Luke Woodham has been arrested. Police say he shot at students and teachers as the buses arrived at school. Two students died, including Woodham's ex-girlfriend. Six others were injured. Police say he left a note saying that he felt he'd been wronged. Witnesses say he showed no emotion while he was shooting. Walked over in front of the library and just started unloading it. Doom, doom, doom. People were frightened and the students, everybody ran. Police say Woodham's mother was found stabbed to death in their home, and again, they believe he killed her before he went to school. For the second time in almost as many months, an employee shuttle bus has hit a cargo jet at DIA. Now, this jet belongs to the U.S. Postal Service. The 727 was leaving the DIA cargo area on a taxiway when the bus crossed directly in front of it, forcing the big jet off onto the grass. The resulting collision badly damaged the jet. The entire nose section of the aircraft torn away. The bus didn't fare a whole lot better. Some airport workers say the problem is a design flaw. They told Nine News that rolling terrain restricts visibility and lighting in the area is substandard. The airport concedes that may be part of the problem. I've been out here in the dark. It's, it's a little difficult. There are lots of lights, uh, uh, street lights and things like that. But uh, perhaps the plane's lights blend in with those. We don't, you know, that's one thing that the NTSB will have to determine. The pilot of the jet broke his ankle just trying to turn the plane away from the bus. Two other flight crew members received minor injuries, and the driver of the bus suffered cuts and bruises and a back injury. All these accidents have employees that use the shuttles worried about safety, and some drivers for the company that operates the buses say another accident is bound to happen. In fact, one driver told Nine News that some drivers have been known to fall asleep at the wheel, and that some buses have carried passengers when the brakes weren't working. Coming up on 9 News at 5, we'll have more on driver and passenger concerns and what's being done about it. UPS may be targeted for yet another strike, this time by its pilots, and it could come as early as next year. A few hours ago, UPS pilots rejected a new contract offer, and the company says that was its last offer. The good news? Both sides have agreed there would be no strike until after the upcoming busy holiday mailing season. A Russian and an American are taking a spacewalk today. The trip outside the Mir space station should last about five hours. The mission is part of an ongoing effort to research building an international space station. Well, right now what they're doing is they're removing some experiments that uh, are helping us judge the effects of the space environment on, on fabrics, materials, or the impact of, uh, of space debris, micrometeorites, on, on the materials that will, the International Space Station will be constructed of. 
Those experiments have been strapped outside Mir since last year. Today's walk did start with a problem with the cable attached to American astronaut Scott Perezinski. He switched to a Russian technique that allows him to hook to Mir like a, Russian, a mountain climber. The Russians are learning something new today as well. The Russian cosmonaut is wearing a U.S. spacesuit, uh, and that's the first time that's, that's been done. And uh, just a couple weeks ago, Mike Fole, our astronaut on Mir, used a Russian spacesuit to do a, a Russian spacewalk. So it's, it's truly an international effort. The Russians inside Mir are busy, too. They are hooking up a new computer to try and solve some of the problems experienced.